When you are constantly connecting with your goal, it helps you make the right choice with any decision or crossroads. If an idea comes to you, even if it doesn't make sense, like (laughs) for me, starting a podcast or writing a book or maybe for you writing a, a script or a movie, get quiet and listen to your heart. Does it echo with you emotionally? Don't let your analytical mind stop you from taking the next step. So you're going to want to stick around for today's episode of Rat Race Reboot, where I'm diving into chapter five of my book, Rat Race Reboot. And this is all about realigning your point of view. The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Welcome to Rat Race Reboot. I'm your host, Laura Noel. And as a certified coach and former 27-year military leader, each week I provide bite-sized mindset pivots that will help you reset your mind, reawaken your spirit, and regain your control. Welcome back, everybody, and I'm glad you're here. So as we've been doing over the past several weeks, I've been going through very briefly, each of the chapters in my book, Rat Race Reboot. And hopefully it inspires you to, at the very least, download your free chapter one of the book to see if you align with it. But hopefully you can take some of these ideas with you, some of these nuggets. So listen today. And if there's something that aligns with you in particular, just take that that take that lesson for the rest of the day and apply it. And if you do this each and every day, you're going to see big results in your life, in your work, in your personal life, in your goals, in in your dreams. So chapter five is all about realigning your point of view. And I find that so often, so many of us are shackled by our own outdated perspectives. And point of view sometimes or our paradigms can feel like a prison at times, but (laughs) they can also feel like a palace. And it really depends on how you frame things. If you're stuck in a, a rut, then maybe it's time to realign your point of view. So imagine seeing your challenges as stepping stones instead of obstacles. How liberating is that? So that's what this chapter is all about, is reframing the way that we're seeing things, becoming aware of some of the roadblocks that might be standing in our way. And also, this is about a a different way of goal setting that you might be used to. Um, So thinking about goal setting, the idea in this chapter is, first and foremost, we really want to realign what we think goal setting is and what we think and what we believe success is. I used to believe that success was only when I reached the goal. And many of us fall into that trap as well. And so it leaves us playing small because we don't like to fail. And there's that fear of failure for many of us. And so as a consequence, we'll set goals that we know we can achieve because maybe we've done them before or we've come really close to achieving that level before. And so we're making incremental gains. So I want to start first and foremost with the idea that we want to get away from SMART goals that are um, specific, measurable, attainable or achievable, realistic, and then with a time set to it. I don't mind SMART goals as long as you understand that your potential is infinite. And um, instead of setting goals that are realistic, how about setting goals that are a risk for you, that risk your old belief and the old version of yourself that get you to stretch and grow? That's what this chapter is all about, is realigning our mindset around what goal setting is. So in the chapter, I talk about three types of goals. There are A goals, which are goals that we've set before. So maybe we've um, run a 5K in the past and we decide, oh, you know what? I haven't been running in a while. I'm going to set a goal to run a 5K in two months. That's great. You should do it if you want to, but that's not a goal. Goals are designed to stretch and grow us. If it brings you joy, do it, but that's not a goal. 
The next type of goal that typically people will um, set is a B goal. And that's a goal where, you know, we haven't reached that goal necessarily, but it's incremental and we know the steps in our mind uh, to get there. So maybe I've run a 5K and I decide, you know, I'm going to run a 10K in three months. You know, it's not that much of a stretch. We could probably formulate in our mind very easily how we could do it. We already know how we're going to get there, even though we haven't done it yet. So again, we should do it if it brings us joy, right? But that's not a goal. A goal is a C goal, something that's designed to stretch and grow you. It's something that excites you and it scares you at the same time and you have no idea how you're going to get there. That's a C goal. I remember when I was doing some uh, fundraising, I was giving philanthropically and I was giving a small amount throughout my military career. We had this combined federal campaign that I would always give to. And when I stopped um, giving to that federal campaign, I wanted to give in a greater capacity to a greater level. And I started growing every month how much I was going to give to an organization of my choice. And over time, um, I, I noticed that I was kind of stagnant, not only in my giving, but also in my receiving in my life and in the growth of my company. And um, in my giving, I was invited to um, go to Kenya to see some of the work that this organization was doing. And while I was there, I set a C goal and I decided that with my husband, because my husband came with me and he was really, really involved in this organization too. And it was really heartfelt. But I decided that there was a need for funding a two-year college program for this first ever school of mechanics in the Maasai Mara region of Kenya. And I had no idea how I was going to do it. And for me, the amount that I needed to give and raise was $222,000. And that was like unfathomable because at that time it was more that I was earning in my, <laughs> in my income per year. But I said, yes, I had no idea how I was going to do it. It was exciting to me. I felt compelled to do it and I was terrified. Um, but I didn't allow that fear to stop me from taking a stand and declaring that this was going to, what I was going to do. And I, again, I had no idea how. And within six months, I got it funded and it was easy and it was effortless and it felt good and it was joyful. And I got other people to join me and really commit to giving deeply. And we all did it together. And I was able to speak uh, at their baccalaureate. And it was really, really, I never would have thought I would do something like that ever in my lifetime. But that C type of goal, when we set something like that, and we make the decision we're going to do it before we know the how, trust and believe that the how will be revealed to us. We have to learn how to tap into our intuitive abilities. When we have the inclination to um, talk to somebody about the goal that you're setting forth. When I had the idea to connect with a person, even though it seemed really random and I hadn't talked to that person, I would take decisive action in that moment while I was in that um, spirit of giving, when I was in vibration and harmony with that goal and giving. And every single time I had a flash of inspiration, when I acted on it, it manifested in forward movement. So that's the part of this that we know we often don't understand very well. We are conditioned to believe that we're not going to set a goal and commit to it until we know the how. And that's great. But as a consequence, it keeps us moving laterally. We're not really moving farther and growing to our ability and our capabilities. So that's the idea of setting a C type of goal. It's something that stretches and grows you. Um, and when you follow your intuition and you're using your analytical mind as well in making decisions, when you listen to that voice of wisdom, that inner voice, your inner GPS, I talk about in the book as well in this chapter, um, that's going to align you with everything you need 
to make your goal or your dream manifested. And um, that's a part that I didn't really understand until I started working with my mentor, Bob Proctor. And I started really practicing, practicing this mindset uh, myself. So I would encourage you to um, get the chapter, get the book, read about the ABCs of goal setting, and really set something that lights a fire inside of you and commit to doing it even before you know the how of getting it. So that's that's it in a nutshell, keeping the focus, aligning your um, your intuitive downloads and your inspiration with action, and you're going to get there. You might not know how you're going to do it now, but trust and believe if you decide on the what first, the how will always follow. Just keep going. I hope this inspires you today. Grab a copy of Rat Race Reboot. This was chapter five, aligning your point of view and aligning your point of view first and foremost with the idea of goal setting. And actually, secondly, this goes hand in hand with goal setting, aligning your point of view with a different idea of what success is. I used to think success was only achieving the goal. And again, when we think that, we're going to play small because we don't want to fail. Our mind is designed to keep us comfortable and safe. So think about success is the uh, progressive realization of a worthy ideal. It's not just when you've reached the goal. It's whenever you've you know, created momentum or taken a step in that direction, that is success. Relish in it. Feel good about the mo momentum you're gaining and the movement you're taking and the action you're taking. And when you feel good in that action, take another step. So two things that I want you to align your point of view and get and kind of realign it to the idea of the ABCs of goal setting. And again, realigning your idea of what success is and then move. You don't have to know the how in order for you to decide on the what. So I hope this has been helpful. If it has, go to ratracereboot.com and um, subscribe to our weekly newsletter. You'll also get a free chapter of Rat Race Reboot, the book, so you can start reading it. And you can also go to Amazon and pick up your copy. But I'm excited. I'm glad you joined us. And remember, everything is created twice, first in your mind and then in physical form. We'll see you next week. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.